man has turned to the sea and to the life above and below it for adventure. Not content with surface thrills, man also invades the depths equipped with a diving hat, weight boots, dive suit, endless courage and curiosity as he moves into this airless fluid world. Join us as we explore the depths on this episode of Diving Into the Past. Hello and welcome to this episode of Diving Into the Past, filmed here in the conference room of HDS sponsor company Kirby Morgan in Santa Maria, California. In prior episodes, we have explored the helmets that launched commercial mixed gas diving. Many of the divers that use these helmets had got their start in the abalone industry. Divers such as Bob Kirby, Bev Morgan, Murray Black, Bob Radcliffe, Dan Wilson, Whitey Steffens, and others. And it was this experience of diving in the abalone industry that made their transition from abalone to oil field diving much easier. In this episode, we're going to visit two domestic American standard diving helmets that were modified for use in the abalone industry. The first of these is this standard US Navy Mark V, which was modified for use in the abalone industry and used by diver Jimmy Perog in San Diego. Diving in the California abalone industry started in 1898 and was done primarily by Japanese divers up until World War II, when they were interned and their industry taken over by Caucasian divers. The industry the Caucasian divers inherited was stocked primarily with diving helmets made in Japan. These were much cheaper to purchase than the helmets made by the American manufacturers. However, at the end of World War II, a large number of US Navy Mark V helmets became available through war surplus stores, such as m and &E Marine in New Jersey, which actually sold them for as little as $50 each. These Mark Vs gradually entered all the American diving industries, including abalone diving, where the divers modified them to suit their particular style of diving. The Mark V helmet we are showing here was originally a late World War II helmet made by Morse. It has an interesting history. It was the personal helmet of San Diego-based abalone diver Jimmy Perog, and it features several modifications, such as the standard Mark V hinged face port has been replaced with a large plexiglass port. The Mark V banana-style exhaust replaced with a commercial Japanese exhaust. An air control valve missing its handle was installed where the split cock was. Cut steel rings replaced the usual brass side port guards and there is a large patch covering a circular hole just behind the top port light. Jimmy Perog secured a place in diving history back in 1953, when he gave his nephew, Lad Handelman, a chance to dive this helmet. According to Bob Kirby, Perog never took great care of any of his equipment, including this helmet, and this indifference to maintenance would eventually cost Perog his life. But using this Mark V helmet, Lad made his first ever heavy gear dive. Pirog declined to supervise the dive, and in less than five minutes, Lad almost drowned and ended upside down in his dress at the surface. Lad survived that first dive, but not his relationship with Pirog, and they soon parted ways. Lad, however, did consider Pirog his mentor. Lad went on to become a top diver in the abalone industry before migrating to the oil patch and there he dove the first generation of commercial mixed gas diving helmets in the 1960s. Ladd went on to co-found CalDive and in 1970 Oceaneering International, the world's largest publicly held diving company. In the summer of 1955, Pirog suffered a malfunction with this helmet and he drowned. His friend and fellow diver, Jerry Todd, acquired this helmet and by 1964 had migrated north to Santa Barbara and was with Bob Kirby at Associated Divers. Here, Todd asked Kirby to remove any useful components from this helmet and then cut the helmet up. It was a sad reminder of his lost friend, Jimmy Perog. Kirby did as he was asked, but 36 years later, in the year 2000, he discovered the shell of this helmet in an antique shop in Ventura, California. Kirby knew that Ladd considered Perog his mentor and over the years since his death, had been searching for his uncle's helmet. 
Kirby acquired the Mark V shell and set about rebuilding it. As a tribute to Ladd, Rick Kilner at Desco sent Kirby all the missing parts for free, and Kirby reconstructed the helmet and presented it as a gift to Ladd at an HDS USA meeting in Santa Barbara. There are a lot more historical details to the story of this old Mark V helmet, and they can all be found in Chapter 3 of Kirby's book, Hard Hat Divers Wear Dresses, which is aptly titled, Jimmy Perog. The second helmet is this Desco Model 29211 Abalone helmet, which has received heavy modifications from the G&G machine shop in Santa Barbara, California. If James Bond was ever an abalone diver, this would have been his helmet, as it is serial numbered A1007. This page from a Desco catalog shows what the helmet would have looked like when it was delivered from the factory. The most striking modification is the removal of all four of the original viewports, which have now been replaced with one large, single, rectangular face port. I currently do not know when, or exactly who, introduced this style of port conversion, but Bob Kirby had installed a similar style face port on a Japanese helmet back in 1956. As became the custom in the early to mid-1960s, the standard interior air channels inside the bonnet have all been removed, and they have been replaced with a single copper tube, which channels the air to a central diffuser. This modified air control system is operated by the valve at the lower left side of the face port. This valve is from a Victor welding torch. These were introduced to replace the earlier, but more bulky, Morse air control valve. A speaker housing stamped G&G Machine SB California is located just above the face port to the right. At one time it was located at the rear of the bonnet. The original Desco speaker housing would have been with a large patches above the face port on the left. One of the most interesting features of this helmet is that it retains part of its communication wiring. This wiring was threaded through the air hose. It exited from the hose to the helmet just before the air inlet elbow, as shown here. Evidently this was solely a West Coast feature that some divers decided to use and very few examples of this style of combination where the communication cable runs inside the air hose are now found. Also unusual is the large eye attached to the back of the breastplate. The breastplate shows a lot of wear, but also a multitude of different patina shades as can be seen. The 12 breastplate nuts and bolts are all the standard US Navy Mark V design and not the usual Desco wing nuts. In the center of the breastplate is an elbow and fitting that the diver's bailout bottle hose would be attached to. The original US Navy Mark V banana tube style exhaust system has been removed from the helmet and a different exhaust with an interior spring-loaded head button has been installed. The large front port conversion is not common among the abalone helmets. I have never seen it as an option in the catalog of any standard helmet manufacturer and it appears to have been a feature on only a few helmets in the Caucasian abalone industry. It is also unusual to find the name of the company that did the conversion stamped into the helmet. In this case, it was G&G Machine Shop of Santa Barbara who have their name stamped in the speaker housing. They also have it stamped in one of the chest weights that go with the helmet. In searching for photographs of this helmet in use in the industry, I came across this one of Lad Haddleman, wearing a Desco helmet that has the same front port conversion. It also has the bailout bottle connection in the breastplate but it still retains its top and side ports. 